What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be compiling RPCSX. And if you don't know what that is, it is a PS4 emulator. And we have a building instructions to follow. As you can see, they're right here. And since we are using Ubuntu 23.10, we will of course be following these instructions. And just for the hell of it, I'm gonna put it over here just so we can follow. Now, I already have it fully compiled and ready to go, but for the purpose of this, we're basically going to go and delete that if I can friggin' find it. There it is, delete. So, open up the terminal and paste the dependencies. So these are called dependencies. Without this, the emulator does not build, okay? I already have everything installed. We're going to hit clear. Next, we are going to grab the git line, which clones the repo, grabs everything extra that needs to install, then CDs into the folder that it ends up making. And for the extra easiness, it then builds the emulator all in one go. Okay, this will use as many threads and cores as you have. And depending on the complexity of the program, it might take a little while. Before I forget, there is one other thing that we need to do. I need to show you what the firmware folder looks like. Now inside of here, you're going to have a folder called 5.05 and 9.00. In here, does, you shouldn't be able to find a folder that looks like this. We're going to delete that. There was an issue with the script before. It's been fixed. But inside, you're going to have common, priv, ssy, sorry, sys, system, and uh is there a system folder in here delete that and vsh uh vhs is pretty much uh the front end of the ps4 i think i'm not really sure and the same thing goes for nine and there you go in the games folder please have everything properly labeled to where you can understand what game you're launching uh for me my games are all labeled like this you notice I have two versions of Sonic. So Sonic Mania, base update, uh, without DLC, and I have Sonic Plus, that's what I like to call it, because it has the DLC activated and it has update 1.04. So there's that. And I believe that's the only game that I have with an update installed? It should be. Anyway, I wanted to go over that before we continued on. Now that it's done, we're going to move on to setting up the script. And uh, at the moment, I kind of need to download it because the one that I have is old and the one here is new. Okay, just like this, we're going to hit extract. And there's the file. I'm going to drag it to my documents. So it's in my docs. We're going to open up in terminal. You're going to want to do this before you do anything you're basically giving it permission to execute so without this it's not going to run next what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit dash r because i want to wipe everything away we're going to maximize this window and i'm going to zoom in a lot because i want to want to see you i uh, want to show you guys what's going on so we're going to hit this so the directory where we cloned everything is this. Okay, hit enter for that. Uh, it's doing it again. He says he disabled this, but it says that we can run games. Now, if your games are on an XFAT system, okay, uh, you're on a case sensitive file system, which means this is wrong and you can ignore it, all right? XFAT is case sensitive, so all your games will run. I suggest you make an XFAT partition on a drive where you can store your games at, and everything will be good. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to my other location, we're gonna mount my PS4 dump drive, and I am going to do this, and we're gonna do this. Now, for our games, I'm gonna copy location, we're gonna paste. We're gonna hit no to this because it's no longer necessary. And then we're gonna enter our firmware. 
Now our firmware is right here. And I'm going to copy location, paste, done, and the default. So then you have to enter, yes, I'm sure. It should literally just say yes, but it is what it is. And there, we're done. Now, I'm going to run through one extra thing that you guys don't have to do, but I do have to do because I'm me. And that is this. What that does, it allows me to run games through a .desktop. And now we're set up, ready to go. So this is God of War. I don't even know if it runs or not. It doesn't. Um, Dead Cells does run. It just loads infinitely. I just want to show you a few games, I guess, before we do anything. It used to load infinitely. This is not the same air that we got before, which is interesting. So I don't know if it's actually going to load or not. I'll have to test that later. I'm kind of hoping that it just loads right now. That'd be great, but it's not. Uh, 22, I believe, is Sonic, but we're going to load 23, which is Sonic Plus, Sonic Mania Plus. And here we have audio, and I'm going to show you about the audio here in a second, okay? Because there's a certain thing you need to be able to run to get the Mango HUD to be able to lock VSync. Gamepad works now, out of the box. As you can see, we're... Well, you can not see, can you? It's very messy in my room and I don't really want to show you. Just trust me, the gamepad just works, which is nice. They've uh, merged that pull request and the audio pull request and the ability to use higher firmware request has been purged as well, merged. They've also fixed the language selection as well, as you can see. We're good. Cool, huh? So let me show you. We're gonna just quit the script by typing 30. And I'm gonna go back into my documents and I'm gonna teach you a little about this script, okay? Like that. Now, to view your games, you're gonna wanna type jash-g.a to be able to get vsync so you can play Sonic Mania without being 500 FPS, you're going to type dash V. And to have the HUD up to show what performance you have, dash M. And to have audio, it's dash A. Okay? So when you hit enter, as you can see, there's no errors. And 23. And there we go. Audio, mango HUD, locked at 60 FPS. We're good. Okay, so with that, you guys know how to fully run this thing. Uh, there is Fedora instructions to build. There is Arch instructions. So you should be good for all three major distributions. For Fedora, there's one extra thing you need to do. Uh, you can find that in the help channel when you type Fedora. Uh, it's editing a CMake thingy. I don't really want to show you how to do it, but um, there's a pull request open for it. I haven't closed it yet, so you can check what to do in there. This is GNOME, by the way, standard old GNOME. I just did it all up to look like uh, Mac OS because that's what I'm used to. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to have a great day. Like, subscribe, share the video. I hope this helps you run the, uh, the games that you wanted or to be able to start testing. As I said, I will link firmware 9 and firmware 5.05 in the description below. Bye everyone.